For every dollar in the pocket of a cyber criminal, we spend sometimes a thousand or even ten thousand dollars at preventing that crime. That money would be much better spent at catching it and prosecuting the criminals. There are different forms of cybercrime and most people think of crime that is very specific to the internet when they hear the term. But as it turns out, there are other forms of cybercrime that to some extent are much larger in terms of their economic impact. So a lot of cybercrime, for example, uh, is actually fraud with welfare uh, payments. Um, and these easily go into the hundreds of millions in a, you know, in a, in a specific country. People don't associate that with cybercrime, but technically they are because they are often um, committed using electronic identification uh, methods. Um, so what you see there is these are basically existing forms of fraud that are now being committed in an electronic environment. So malware is software, just like any other software, with one distinction, it's been written for malicious purposes. So it executes tasks um, that are not um, uh, done with the consent of the owner of the device on which it's running. And you can imagine many different forms there. People typically think of stuff like phishing, for example, um, stuff like botnets, where computers are hacked and then there are specific criminal business models associated with using hacked computers. The first time that the world was confronted with the term botnet was in the late 90s. Botnet uses malware, malicious software to take over your computer and use it as a slave or a zombie computer for criminal acts on the web. The amount of botnets is not really known, but the estimates go from a couple of thousands to 30 million hijacked computers. With a botnet, a criminal is able to attack other systems by denial of service attacks or sending large amounts of spam. By using enormous amounts of data, websites are being flooded and blocked. We haven't seen the end of botnets and what kind of other criminal acts could be done with it. But we do know it is a big threat to our cyberspace as criminals are trading their botnet capabilities among them. The, the only thing that a botnet really is, is the ability for an attacker to control all of these machines simultaneously. So typically what then happens is this botnet gets rented out to other criminals who then use it for a specific criminal business model, whether it's spam, click fraud, denial of service attacks, identity theft, it, it, it can differ. Phishing is basically an activity where a victim is tricked into going to a website, typically, that portrays to be um, some uh, company that they trust, but is in fact operated by their criminal. And this is the main mechanism through which criminals harvest account information. So if you can trick somebody, for example, to log into a fake Facebook account, you then have their login credentials for Facebook. And those can be traded on the underground economy. I was a target of a phishing attack. I received an email which copied a style of Google support, team, which warned me that my email account was used to distribute porn. So I had to follow a certain link and enter my password to belong that account belongs to me. And I can tell you why I reacted on that email, because over the last years, at least twice, somebody opened a page for me in Russian social networks where they published my public photos, but turned into porn. So I found myself having audios walking naked on the street. So it was really horrible. And when I got that mail, I was terrified that it was happening again. So I followed that link, but uh, entered my password, but it didn't bring me anywhere. And it was obvious that it was not Google uh, a website. And in two days, probably I started to think about it and talk to my colleagues and they suggested that probably it was phishing. And then I changed my password, but seems like those two days were enough to upload lots of data from my mailbox. So they were undermining my credibility. They wanted to tell that I was corrupted and also that I was not independent journalist. Mm. 
Ransomware is a form of cybercrime that's new, that's specific to the internet. And what it basically does is a piece of malware gets installed on your machine and then encrypts all of your data. And the next step is that it shuts down your machine and shows you a message that basically says, it's basically a ransom note. It says if you ever want to see your data again, pay X amount of euros here. And if you pay the, uh, that amount of euros, then you may get the key with which you can decrypt your data and actually retrieve it. So as you can imagine, it's relatively easy for cyber criminals to cross national boundaries. Um, even the simplest attacks uh, often include a variety of jurisdictions that then all have their own legal systems, all have their own uh, enforcement agencies, and states are struggling with how to enable investigation uh, to operate fast enough to actually go after these criminals. The, the, the normal mechanisms that they have, mutual assistance treaties, um, they operate relatively slowly. So, so yes, it's, it's more difficult because um, the, the technology that the criminals use is not, is not geographically bound. And I think they purposefully also use the fact that they cross multiple jurisdictions as a way to make enforcement uh, harder. Obviously there's crime, crime needs to be fought, and I think there's very, very little controversy over the extent to which law enforcement is entitled to operate in this environment. There are only debates about specific means of enforcement or means of investigation, like you know the Dutch police force who is hoping to get a law passed that allows them to hack back in other countries. That's controversial, but the idea that law enforcement in principle should be doing investigations of online crime, I think is broadly accepted. It's different for the national security angle that states have. There you see that there is actually very little agreement on what states should or should not be doing on the internet. And let's say the short version of that debate is that states have turned out to overreach in this environment. They try, they've learned that they can, tr can control more than they used to think a few years ago and they have taken that lesson to heart and have enabled themselves to, yeah, to do large-scale surveillance um, and uh, all kinds of other activities that they feel are in the interest of the state. So I used to be relatively pessimistic about the uh, the possibilities of the police to effectively combat cybercrime. But uh, as it turns out, uh, the police is actually making up uh, ground in this area. And I think we've seen a number of arrests over the past four or five years that did really have an impact in the underground economy. Now, did that reduce the overall level of crime? No, but it did, uh, it did show that enforcement activities can change the nature of um, the criminal activity and increase the cost for crime and criminals to do business in certain areas. So uh, I'm not that pessimistic. That being said, we also have to understand that the bulk of cybercrime will not be solved by law enforcement. It will be solved because the companies that operate this infrastructure are better able to um, mitigate it. And only a handful of cases will really ever be um, taken up by the police. Cybercrime is growing, which won't surprise anybody, um, but the rate of growth is actually proportional to the rate of the growth of the online economy. So the more we do uh, our activities online, the more also uh, crime is taking place in that environment. In fact, if anything, it's less than proportional. So the idea that we are being inundated with a, with a tsunami of cybercrime is really incorrect. Um, it's much more the move of traditional crime that just like the rest of society is going online. Well, if you want to look at the, the economic uh, impacts of cybercrime, the largest impact is not so much the, the gains of the criminals, but it's actually the cost we put into defense.